I'm, uh, I'm from Able Software, I'm the software development manager there, and I'm going to talk to you a bit about our new user interface and how we use Jade Skins to um, help us with that. It was actually at the last user group meeting where we first um, got the idea. We, um, we've been stewing over what we were going to do about our front end, and they did. They, they showed us the new improvements for the Jade Skins, and we thought that sounds a bit like us, and we put our hand up. Um, all right. Uh, but first, a little bit about Able. Um, uh, our product, Able, it's called Able, is an ERP system, um, much like Greentree. Um, we've been developing in Jade for over 20 years. In fact, we're probably one of the very first people using Jade. We've still got the beta CD. Um, and our customers span a wide range of, of industries, um, including one that I love particularly, which is um, brewing beer, which isn't actually up there, but we've recently got a craft beer brewery. So uh, it's, um, they're getting a lot of site visits from me. <laughs> All right. So, um, a little bit about our architecture. We've got a multi-schema architecture, and what's important about this slide is the user schema. The user schema is where our clients and distributors write their own customizations, and that's important in this project because they've, they've written a lot of them, um, and you'll see that shortly in terms of the numbers. So the nice thing about our, um, our, our hierarchy is it enables customers to upgrade the core product while still maintaining their customizations. Uh, these are our old screens, um, the motivation for why we wanted to do this, um, very 80s looking, um, quite cluttered, everything jammed in there. Um, we, um, we had access accessibility concerns, um, we'd used colours for, um, to, to let users know that there are actionable things you could do, for example that light blue, I don't know if you can see it, but some of those text boxes are a light blue, it meant you can right click on those fields and select a list. Um, and of course we wanted, to we wanted something fresh um, for the future, so here we go. The goals, obviously we want a fresh and modern look, um, we want to reduce the clutter, um, but we also wanted to improve the usability, we didn't just want it to be a reskin, um, and we knew that relying less on, on colours would improve accessibility. The scale of the, pro the project, um, in total we needed to manage 4,500 screens, 1,400 of which is in the core product, um, 1,400 with one of our distributors and 1,800 on a single client. I'll, scale, I'll talk about Alsco a little bit. Alsco are the largest um, linen rental business in the world. You've probably seen their trucks around delivering linen to hospitals and restaurants and all sorts of things like that. Um, and they were an part, important part of the process because they needed to come along on this ride with us. Now, I'll just get my new, new page. We had, to be, we had to be realistic about how much we could change. So we asked, we asked Jade to, um, to re totally redesign the top and redesign the bottom and we gave them no, no, um, no creative guidelines there whatsoever. But we, we decided that a restyle for the centre was, was all we could manage. We, th we thought our clients would, um, it would probably be too much for them to t turn the system completely upside down and, and possibly for us as well to actually get the job done. We actually gave, um, well, what we did is we gave Jade a 25-page brief, um, explained how our software worked, and then just let them go for it. Which is really nerve-wracking because, if you imagine, we've, we've been writing the software 20 years, and we've done everything in-house before, so this is the first time something, something had gone outside of our company. This is the first look at the new screen. Um, qu quite a visual impact difference, we believe. We really, we really love the new design. Um, um, the, the point of this slide is to, to, is to illustrate the fact that we, act, we actually had to make our screens bigger to make them look good, to get that extra white space. Um, and that brought some of its, its own challenges, which I'll talk about later. The sign-on screen. I think this really, really illustrates the difference between a developer designing a screen and a designer designing a screen. <laughs> And it's a, you know, it's the first screen, it was, for, it was the same just about for all of us, it was the first screen that anybody sees and anybody is going to see when they first sign into the new system, so it was important to have that impact. Strangely enough, this might be the question actually, that screen got me in a lot of trouble with the powers that be in my company, and at, in, at, at the end of the session, see so you can guess why, I'll let you just look at it for a little bit. Uh-oh. 
fail. What have I done? Is that where it's supposed to be? Yep. That's weird. And this is just drilling into um, what the designers did in terms of taking the exact same existing functionality and turning it into something that's really quite, well, you know, if you look at the top, it's really a, it's, it's really a Tetris layout, and the bottom is just lovely and flowy, and, and it's, all, it's just still got all exact same elements, um, but just done in a far more sensible way. This is an example of a very busy screen that we've got. Um, it actually was a re relatively new screen. Um, and we, we just found that even the busy screens that we chose not to declutter still looked far, more, far less in intimidating after the new design. Um, this screen is a bit unique. I'm not going to do too many screens, but it's important to show you a few of these things to understand. If you're going to get into this and get into skins, you've got to know these things. <coughs> just about all of the controls on this screen are not available on the Jade Painter. They're custom controls, which is a base. If you're a developer, you know what I'm talking about. You have a, they have a base control where you can just draw a box, and then in code, you can draw your controls as you bring up the screen. So you can't really give this screen to someone and say, hey, make me some skins. So we actually had to make the skin elements ourselves. But we were able to replicate exactly the design that Jade came up with. Um, and just with a little bit of help from BJ, some of you might know who he is, Brian Johnson from Jade, he's a legend at Jade. And um, I was involved with the Jade design team and get it done. And it's important to mention that because the fact, I, I think having BJ work with the design team really means that they will always deliver something that, they, that you know can be skinned. So when you get these designs back, they're just pictures, but they've run it past BJ, he's like, yep, no, they, we can do that in a skin. Now, this is a good example of less is more. Um, it's the old school with boxes around everything and colours everywhere. And in the new system, you know, we've taken the boxes out from around the, the date, date numbers and the boxes around the link to, which are those ugly orange boxes up top, and less colours on the top right where we've got the normal, important, urgent, and they've cleaned up, you know, it just looks nice and clean. This is one of our bread and butter screens. Um, we, we predominantly have manufacturers as customers, and it was important that our manufacturing screens looked, looked fresh after the, after the redesign. Technical challenges. Um, I'm sure you can appreciate, and I'm, I, know the, I know the MIB guys will, that it, it's a big job, no matter how you slice it and dice it. Um, it'd be nice to think you can just chuck a skin on it and look beautiful, but the reality is you're going to make things bigger and you're going to move controls around. So we had to produce some scripts to do that. Um, the beautiful icons, which I didn't really talk about. Thanks, Logan, wherever you are. Um, awesome job on those. Um, they actually ended up being causing quite a, not causing, they ended up being quite a big part of the project. Um, we had to figure out how to ship the icons with the code. So they're not actually in the database, you've got to ship the icons images with the code. Um, we had to do all the function to icon mapping. Every screen has got its own fun functions that you can choose. Um, they're, not, they're not hard coded. And you can also, cut, users can set up their own icons, so they need to be able to pick icons or import their own icons or ones that are outside the, um, the pool of icons that we've got. And obviously how to refresh a, an environment once like, more icons are added. Um, we had some unavoidable code changes caused by just something simple like um, changing the, 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 um, the case on the buttons. So, you know, you say, oh, well, this button said save, and it used to say it in capitals, S-A-V-E. This, this is a really basic example, but, you know, we had thousands of these things. Um, we had to go and check in the code and see what we were doing to make sure that was going to work afterwards. We'll talk about base controls later. Um, technical challenges, converting the function buttons from the old ones to the new. Um, all the configuration screens around those button areas, with the functions at the top of the screen had to change and be redesigned from scratch. Um, and this is something that caught us out rather than, I don't know if it caught Green Tree out, but we weren't able to go to Jade 2016. And in Jade 2016, the lovely thing about it is you can view your, your screen in the painter with the skin applied. So we actually had to verify every single screen in the runtime. That was a mission. Um, low resolution monitors. Um, I will just, I've, got, I've got that on a second slide, so I'll talk about them in a bit. So other challenges. This turned out to be quite a big challenge. It was nothing to do with the, the process with Jade. It was something we decided to do. When we got our skins, what we found is that the, um, there are no events on the, on, the, on the skin borders. So when you've got a text box, that little icon then is actually part of the skin itself. You can't click on it. It doesn't work. Nothing happens. And it seemed intuitive to us that you'd want to click on it. So we had these new icons like, yeah, they look really good, oh, but you can't click on them. Shit, what are we going to do now? So we made the decision to swap all of our text boxes out system-wide with a custom control. It's actually a text box in it and a little button on the right. So it looks identical, still uses the same skin that's provided by the Jade guys, 
but it actually does what you think it should do. You hover over it, it, it highlights, you click on it, and the selection mode all comes up. So that was a big usability change that we made. Working with Jade. Well, I've gone fast. Um, first thing I want to say about this slide is um, I'm not getting paid to say this. We loved working with them. It was, it, was, it, was a ve it was a very satisfying experience. From the start to the end, we loved working with Gray's team. Um, they listened to us. We provided a detailed brief, and they really took that on board. Um, this, the second bullet point I've got there is a really important one for me, being able to design within the guidelines. And as I said earlier, well, I, was, I was really nervous about giving the system to someone else and, and, and hoping that what we got back was something that we could actually work with. But we were delighted. We, got, we, we turned up for our show and tell, and we had no idea what we were going to get. And we saw five beautiful looking screens that we were able to slice and dice and, and put together something that we really loved. So I'm miles off my notes now. Yeah, so bravo Jade. Well done. Did I say that right? <laughs> the outcome, we got exactly what we wanted, a fresh, modern GUI, more, more intuitive. Um, it's important to say that it, there, there was a minimum, there was some impact, but it was very minimum on the existing architecture. The, the system still does what it used to do. The users will still be familiar with how it is now, but it just looks a whole lot better and they give you a nice little UI style guide you can use to give to developers so they know what they're doing. All right. Can anyone guess why I got in a lot of trouble for that sign on screen? Why? Why? And why would that matter? Everything. I mean, everything you brand is... Yeah. Yeah, it was a trademarking issue. So we had, we had, a, we had a registered trademark and um, I actually work in a family business and my father's my boss. So I can yell back at him, which I did. And so we had a big Barney about this. And anyway, after a couple of calls to our trademark attorney, they decided it was OK. So you know, we, we got this beautiful new screen, and I loved it, and really think, didn't really think too much of it. So if you're ever going through, down this path, make sure you check with your trademarks. He wins the prize. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Diego. I'm the software development manager uh, at MIOB. Uh, we are in charge of MIOB Greentree. Uh, this is Jane Fulop. She is the product manager uh, for Greentree. Uh, Jane? Uh, just to also like to share that uh, we have a terminology at MIOB and we're called two in a box. So that's pretty much when development and product management are always together to make the decisions and to make sure that the team and the product uh, are being taken care of properly. Unfortunately, I didn't wear my t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to be here to talk uh, to you guys about AY Refresh, one of the projects that we have done and we are about to launch that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so before I get started, just a little bit of an introduction. I'm pretty sure everyone knows here uh, who MIOB is. Uh, we are a company of about 1,500 people, maybe 1,600 across New Zealand and Australia. In our development group, we have just nearly 600 people, so it's quite a large group. Uh, we are part of the enterprise division uh, with other ERP products and payroll products. And uh, as I said, we're going to be talking about MIOB Green Tree here uh, in the refresh uh, UI refresh project that we have done. So we're going to keep this very uh, quick and short and sweet for you guys. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the journey, uh, how we started the project, how we engaged with John's team and Jade, uh, and how the process happened. And then uh, in, the, in the later stage, Gene will be talking about the product itself, how it looks like. There will be a quick demo for you guys. Uh, and you guys are one of the very first people to actually see the new green tree because it hasn't been launched yet. As I said, in two weeks' time, it's going to be uh, out in the market. So uh, talking about the journey. Uh, everything we do uh, it starts with our customers, right? Gene will be talking a lot more about the feedback we have been getting. But pretty much our customers were saying, um, this UI is dated. You guys need to do something. Uh, we engaged with our own MIOB UX team uh, to begin with. And then after a lot of discussion and a lot of prototyping, we put a concept together. So 
Internal to MIOB, uh, we decided how the new product would look like. And then after that, we were like, cool, uh, Jade offered the skins. Uh, we have Jade developers, we know Jade pretty well, we know what we are doing, but how we bring that to life? And that's when we had the idea, whoa, we should talk to John, we should talk to Jade. And then uh, we went down to Christchurch in September last year. Uh, we spent a, a couple of days with John and, and his team. Uh, we were catching up with the Jade UX team, uh, Grace team, Logan was there as well. Uh, they were telling us what they do, how they work, and we were showing them how our prototype, our concept was looking like and our ideas. So after that f first engagement with them, it was a very quick process as you guys can see here. Uh, we visited them in September. In the same month we had a signed agreement with them how we would work together and then very early in October the project started. So the first thing, as I said, we had a concept. So the first logical step for us was to reveal that with Jade. Is our vision, is our dream something that can be achievable in Jade? Uh, that was the question we didn't have an answer for. And uh, hopefully, and actually thankfully, uh, they said, yeah, that's pretty much doable. Uh, and we didn't need to change much. So one of the first things that we have done here was actually to reveal the skin concept, presenting to Jade uh, what we had and making sure that that was feasible. Uh, after that was done, and as you can imagine, that conversation took maybe a, a couple of weeks, a few weeks. Uh, after that, we started discussing two things in parallel here. The first one was the icons. Uh, we had a list of a thousand and a half, maybe? A mm. uh, thousand and a half icons, uh, a number of generations of icons, the ones that we knew we used, the ones that were just there because of historical reasons, and then we created the new set. Uh, we were working with Logan and, and Gray again uh, to understand how we see the, the icons, uh, what's the direction we want to take uh, on, on that graphical design. And then uh, Gray's team with Logan, they have done pretty much everything. There was lots of cycles of reviews, feedback, as you can imagine. And at that stage, we were having uh, two stand-ups per week in terms of a process, which was quite helpful for us. So as a team at MIOB Green Tree, of course, uh, we run Agile, we run Scrum, we meet every day, we know exactly what's going on. And then having Jade with us every day was probably too much, but a couple of, uh, a couple of times per week, we were getting together, everyone to understand exactly where we were in the process and questions and making sure that all the blockers uh, were removed out of the way. Uh, so in a while, uh, we have got the new set of icons and throughout the, the, the project, uh, what I call their technical support and advice. Uh, this is pretty much what I meant there, was to bring uh, all that vision, not just the icons, but all the UI elements and everything that iSkin uh, includes uh, back uh, to life. Uh, as um, happened with Abel, uh, Abel, there was a lot of challenge through the way, uh, a lot of things that we thought it was easier to achieve and eventually there was a little bit more work involved. Uh, but then again, with the J team, and especially BJ at that stage, uh, it was quite helpful and to unblock us and to make sure that we could uh, implement all of that. So it was quite a journey. Uh, we started in September. Um, the concepts, the, the initial screens, the icons, they were done nearly November, December. And then since then, January, February, we have been making sure that all our screens and Gene will be giving you some numbers. Uh, in terms of screens, forms that we have, that they were all compatible, that they were all uh, with the same look and feel. And then, as I said, in March, in the 19th of March, we're going to be having MRB Green Tree 2018.1 out in the market. And then uh, I'm pretty sure all our customers will be quite happy with that. So moving forward here, uh, I was reflecting what was the value that we got out of Jade uh, during this project. And I listed the four, uh, the four main things that came to my mind at that stage. The first one, the wealth of knowledge that the UX team has in the design space. So they can really provide you uh, with good insights. They have done that to us, reviewing our concepts and making sure that it was uh, great. And working very close with the MIOB UX team. The second one is to make that graphical design and that concept, that ideal concept, that dream, reality and make sure that all the, the UI elements were actually something tangible um, and usable. That team 
this is probably I'm, I'm quite uh, a people oriented person and uh, this one for me was very important uh, I put there very motivated and enthusiastic team uh, you know those meetings uh, I always classify people in two groups when you meet with them uh, there are the ones that you gi give you energy and there are the ones that drain your energy right and those meetings were quite good because every time that I was going and attending those meetings I was leaving there more assured that we were on the right track and getting energized with what with the discussions that I could see between our MIOB UX team, JD UX team and uh, MIOB Green Tree development team which was a number of people, maybe a dozen people involved uh, and it was quite good to see uh, the energy around that room. Uh, and the last one when bringing that to life and actually coding all of that in the skins, no one is better positioned than Jade themselves uh, to help you. As I said before, uh, if you go down that journey, we face blockers and everyone I believe would also face some blockers, uh, but they are there to help you and uh, as they helped us and it was a great experience. So that was pretty much the summary of our journey and uh, now Jean will be talking to you and showing the product how it looks like. Right, just to uh, recap on what uh, Diego mentioned earlier, I'm going to be talking about, uh, just putting a little bit more context around why we needed to refresh our UI, and also to give you a sneak peek of our new skins. So, there were two decisions that we made um, going forward to why we wanted to refresh the UI. The first one is we wanted to align the Green Tree product with the MYB brand. The second is we have inbuilt in our Green Tree product in house survey, and we got a lot of feedback via NPS to indicate that we definitely needed to do some work on the Windows UI. Uh, just to give you a flavour of some of those, uh, the feedback that we got, and I have vetted some of these, is we had the font size was too small. Uh, the uh, Windows interface was clunky, it was outdated, um, and just everything about the look and feel of it wasn't great at all. So as a result of that, our number one goal was how could we improve the customer experience? And the first thing that came to mind is we really needed to focus on modernizing the Windows UI. I've noticed some stats down the bottom. We currently have 44 skins, and they're obviously legacy skins over time. We've been upgrading Jade, and they're just sitting in, the, in, in, in there not being used. One of the key decisions that we decided that we wanted to go forward was having only one skin. And the reason behind that is that when we had to go through and do an analysis of all of those 44 skins and try and tie them back to all the iconography, uh, it was such a huge job, and I know that the development team we're relieved when we said moving forward, one skin only. We currently have over 2,310 forms. So in itself, what we needed to do is we needed to manually go through 1,900 of those forms and maintain them. Why? Because changing the font size had a huge impact how those forms went to look. Uh, we had to go through all of the forms that actually had controls on them. Uh, eyeball them to make sure that they were aligned and also to ensure the font size and the icons were correct. Now you're probably wondering why we needed to do that, why we couldn't uh, use a script. It was too difficult. So we spent a lot of hours and hardship, it feels like, uh, going through and maintaining all of those forms. Um, and to note down the bottom, we also ran at the same time an early access program. An early access program is where we allow our partners and customers to be able to view new features before they go out the door. The beauty about having an early access program is that we get early feedback and we also sort of wanted to validate that the fact that the skin that we were putting out was going to be okay for our partners and customers to use. We've got some really great feedback um, and we've taken on board a couple of changes just to sort of give you a note of what they are. One of them was that our customers used the variable skins to be able to identify what companies they were in and also uh, to distinguish whether they were in a production or a test environment. So what we have done, we've tweaked it and uh, like Diego mentioned with the UX team, we also ran stand-ups as a part of our early access program. 
And that is where we have the developers, the team involved, and also the customers uh, in ourselves. And it works fantastically because we get that feedback instantaneously and we know that we're actually on track. The modernising of the Windows UI is only the first phase. We are looking to go out and visit our customers uh, and just to get a sort of a, an idea on how they perceive our product and the key areas that we need to be working on. Uh, looking through survey results doesn't give you enough to actually understand what's actually going on out there. And, and we really want to go out there and lift our customers' perception of Green Tree as a product. Um, the other area why we've chosen to refresh the UI is customer perception is everything. Um, you'll see in a minute what it used to look like was not great at all. And I believe working with Jade um, and our UX team, it's just had a phenomenal um, impact to what it's going to look like now. So the outcomes. If I was to sort of summarise the learnings, uh, number one, when we took on this project, we knew we had a lot of forms that needed to be maintained. However, what we didn't know, and I think um, Callum alluded to this, the technical challenges, is all of the changes that need to be made to all the forms. So first of all, if I was to rewrite history and go back, we would really need to understand the scope of the work and effort. And then we, from a planning perspective, we would be able to work out to make sure we're going to hit the deadline. We have got an amazing development team back at MYB, and they have really pulled out all the stops and being able to change all of the forms and readiness for our release in March. Uh, going forward, developing another skin should be easy as long as we don't change the font. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that that doesn't happen. And also, as I said before, it's about improving the customer's perception. Um, if we have all of those, then we're on our road to success. And uh, I was going to ask a question. And uh, maybe you can win the prize at the back. The big one. The big one. But I'm not going to. I'll leave that up to John. No, we're not doing it. So now I'm just going to go through and uh, show you what our new skins look like. So give me a moment while I unplug devices. And I was going to note that if you've got any questions around uh, changing all of the forms and those uh, technical aspects, we've got two guys from Green Tree that I'm sure they would love to talk to you. Chris down the back. Hello, Chris. And uh, Troy. What's going on? Okay. <laughs> Can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so to to the left to the left is the current green tree skin to the right is the new version so what do you guys think about that straight away for me it's like wow just loving the colors uh, as you can see, we've standard it to the MYB brand, the uh, fading out purple. Now I'm going to log into the existing system first. So this is what the current skin looks like. Very modern, as you can see. I will open up one of the forms. This is our current skin at the moment. You can see it's very outdated, looks really cluttered. So not a really good, from I suppose from a selling um, perspective, if you're going out and showing them this, what would you think? I suppose probably 10 years ago, maybe it was the end thing, but things have changed. bring out exactly the same form. Okay. 
Now, to me, that looks clean, crisp and clear. Uh, you've got modernised iconography at the top. Uh, the fonts, it, was it Segoe? Uh, and overall, just the look and feel of it, to me, looks very uncluttered. Now, we haven't done a lot to this at all. And again, you know, we see this going out to our customers will have a huge impact in how they perceive Green Tree as a product. Any questions? Yeah, I just um, uh, see that we have 44 skins and customers were really eager to differentiate between um, suppliers or whatever it was. Um, now you've got one skin, so how does that work? How does that no, so um, to differentiate the difference between companies, we can actually have a backwash. And oh, okay. interesting enough, that backwash has been there since the product was developed, and our sites didn't actually realise that. So that's a bonus. They, they've actually got a feature they didn't realise they've actually got. Uh, and the other way that we needed to differentiate between, say, like a production environment and a test environment, is we have an any setting whereby it'll point to a different colour. And uh, this is purple, the test is pink. It's not driven towards females, but it feels like it. Anything else? Any you know other questions, guys? There's one at the back. Um, I suppose the one of the key things was is that uh, I suppose it's difficult to know the response that you're going to get, but the response that we did get, they actually loved it. It, it. it was it was almost like wow, we've actually hit the mark with this, and and that was really important to us as well. And, and we do have an expectation that when this goes out to market, that or, you know our customers get this new skin. That some of it, some people will love it, some people may not like it so much. But however, over time, like anything new, it grows on you. Just to make the point, that was not necessarily a surprise. That was just a confirmation yeah. of our ex our yeah. expectations. Yeah. Chris. Can I get you to estimate? I think, Cullen, you actually mentioned that you had yeah, a script Cullen, that went through. Yeah. Cullen, come up. Cullen. Yeah, the questions for both sessions at once. So I think you mentioned that you had a script that ran through and adjust the size of the forms and uh, changed the controls. Was that an easy process to go through and develop? Uh, the, the script wasn't too bad to write, but the, the reality is you can't move everything. Um, so we just did the best we could. and. and you know, we had, we had one developer who Mason who's here somewhere. Put your hand out, Mason. He's an absolute machine. He could do it. He could he could do a, <laughs> a take the old form and turn it into a new form. And how, how many were you doing an hour? It was something ridiculous. Anyway, I think I can't remember the, the number. But then other others would take four times as long. So it depends on the developer and the rest of it. And then there's the cleanup that goes on after it. So your developers go through and do all that process. Then your testers come along and they find all the mistakes you made. Then you have to go back and move things around. You change your mind and do this and the next thing. But it's a big job. Yeah. Yeah, you can. We, we can. I can relate. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, and as, as Chris was saying, if you have a form with six hundred com, uh, components, uh, you you should expect a lot more work, right? So it, it it's it's quite variable. Uh, it varies heaps. Yeah, I think as and, and as Chris mentioned, the the um, the largest form had uh, six hundred controls on it, which varied from six hundred, five hundred, four hundred, three hundred, right down to two. So, you know. <laughs> Time-wise, to maintain those is, is quite variable, depending on the number of controls on the form. Your question before as well, are you using skins now? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yep. So in terms of, um, we've also done something similar in terms of identifying which system is which. And what you can do in the skin is you can, you can have a different form element skin. So it's, it's just the one skin, but this lives in there. And you can, so you can just change your title. You can do different title bars at the top. Oh, yeah. you can, in our case, we're just changing the logo in the, in the top left to make it a different color so people can identify which system it is. And you can do that on the fly. That's really nice and easy to do it that way. Okay. Yep. I'm curious, what size did you guys go to? Yeah. Number of pixels? I'll ask, ask later. Yeah. Uh, what, what size screen did you go to? Uh, um, when you painted it, when you painted your forms, what was the new size? Resize the forms to make them bigger? Okay. Yep. A little bit of an interesting thing that we ran into was our distributor had bought laptops with really low resolution screens because our old ones looked really good on that. But the new ones didn't. <laughs> So he needed to go through a process of buying new laptops. So our new screens. I mean, they were, they would resize, and we were okay. They, they would it would manage, but yeah, that's one of those things you don't think about. Because any advice for companies out here who might be considering embarking on something like this and maybe trying to get us get a sense of the scale of the job, can you look at the number of screens you've got, the number of controls, and sort of make an estimate for that? Yeah, we we, we could look at your system and tell you that. Definitely. One thing that's uh, that's also important that kind of caught us short at one stage is um, how much you have code behind the, each form. Yeah. Some of the forms you have customizations like the, chain, the, the the font style, font size under the form, and then they are usually a lot harder to to update by scripts. So the reason that uh, 1900 of our forms was needed some manual intervention. It's because when we were applying the generic chains, they were having some sort of incompatibility with that. So 400 was just you know, out of the back of the script, all good. And then everyone else, uh, every other form, we need to go manually to, to understand exactly what was wrong and then to change that. So depending on the code base, it may vary a lot as well. We actually wrote scripts to go through our code and check for mistakes in our code. Yeah. So that can be done as well. We had the same, yeah, pretty yeah. much to, to run across all the forms and tell which form, which are the mistakes, and how many, you know. Well, how many screens have you got? <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least okay. So to put it in perspective for us, I, I think it's fair to say we probably did a bit more in terms of the, the, the change from A to B. Um, we started, we, at the end of, somewhere around the end of April, we had a meeting with these guys to get our, um, our pictures back of how it would look. And we were doing pretty well to around October. Um, and then we made that decision to change from text boxes to the new base controls. And that pretty much screwed us. So that was that added about three months to the process. And it was, a, I mean, but we're 100% we're satisfied. So, and like you guys seem to be as well. Yeah, the, the journey for us has taken roughly six months from the time of signing the from the very beginning to release. Yeah. yeah, and we've got a similar number of developers to these guys, I believe. Yeah. You've got about, what, five, six J developers? Not working on the project. Working yeah. on the project was three, four, yeah. three to four? Yeah. 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 Well, they're just similar That's in terms yeah. of, because we have to keep our business running as well, so. Hey, have you found that working for um, high deep guy screen? So we use an older version of Ringtree, but our clients control is encountered bizarre little glitches in the older Jade stuff. Have you found it much easier for dispensing your laptops and whatnot with the reskinning? These glitches? Glitches? Glitches in what sense? Oh, just bizarre things like size and scale, and just the odd little display thing, scaling to a high DPI. Yeah. I see. I think what you're meaning. Is, are, you t are you talking about the Windows scaling that you, need, you quite often run when you're running a really like we got I've got a 4K resolution monitor on my laptop, but it yeah. automatically sets the scaling to 250 yeah, or some weird thing. Like now we've, we've, we're we're fine with all that. We haven't had any issues. Yeah, I think the big advice I'd give is um, 
let the designers do the work. Get designers to design because it really pays off. But I don't know what you guys thought of it, but we just love our new system compared to the old one, and I can't look back. Oh, thanks very much, guys. We really appreciate it. It's lovely to have customers. <laughs> lovely to have customers uh, sharing their experience um, and such great experiences too. And, and on the other note, obviously, it's very pleasing for us to have presented last year at the conference. Um, we did quite a big, um, for those of you that uh, were there will remember quite a number of a couple of sessions around skins, talking about the sort of things we put into the product to support this, how we had a vision to make the world better in the ways of the user interface, and it's just so gratifying for us to see that you guys are starting to seize that and make use of it and get some real benefit from it. It makes it all worthwhile.